Welcome to Pagan Crafting. Today we got something cool. We have a little bit of art scrying with ink, a little intuitive drawing. We're going to look at a few different ways that we can play with the ink today and have some fun. So join me today as we blot our way into foretelling our future. So what I have here is a whole bunch of different types of divination ink that I've made from blackberries, butterfly pur purple and blue and green teas, to purple cabbage. I've used spices, flowers, mushrooms. Here is avocado with and without vinegar, two different colors. One will stay pink, one will go green depending on the type of pH balance of the paper that you use. Paprika, also very, very beautiful. And I use some turmeric as well for the spices. You could also use different types of teas. I find Earl Grey teas, black teas are the best. Hibiscus teas, this is purple butterfly tea. This is coffee. Coffee's magnificent for dyeing paper, I tell you that. Chaga is made from mushrooms. So again, herbs, plants, dyes, anything you can think of, moss, acorns. This is some divination dye. Here are some of the many colors of the inks that I've made. If you wish to make some of these, here's a video up above where you can check that out. Now, the different ways of divination is you can use the, the, the ink in the water, which is really, really fun and easy to use, and you can see all kinds of magnificent pictures that come to life. What if we bring it to paper? So I was thinking we're going to take some ink here today. I have some avocado with vinegar, divination ink. I have turmeric. And I'm going to use some coffee. That's just regular instant coffee. And my black divination ink made from charcoal. You can get that on my Etsy store. I'll throw down in the description if you like. Check that out. The link to that. I'm using some full moon water because I'm a dork and you can. And might as well just power up your page and uh, add some extra love to it. I like enchanting my pages with the moon water and also my little spritz moon water bottle is the perfect little mister for my paper. So it's just a matter of playing around with your homemade divination ink. You could also use a drawing ink or Indian ink. There are different calligraphy inks that you could use as well if you don't feel like making your own divination ink. But it's just a matter of 15 minutes, half an hour, an hour of your time with a plant-based substance and see what kind of colors that you can come up with. There's no right or wrong. You can think of a question while you're laying down the drops of color, but the drops of color, they can go in any pattern that you'd like. You can control it, you can not. You can also just dab another piece of paper right over top of it. If you find you have too much water or too much ink, you can blot it off with some paper towel or a tissue. Just use the corner and take a bit out. As you're putting down your ink blots, think about your question at hand, your intention. If you want a general reading, if you're asking for some general guidance, 
what will come up maybe will come through your intention as you're laying down your colors you can spritz a little bit of more water on again afterwards again you can play with it so you can try some water on the paper first then ink or you can try a dry paper ink then water I'm just gonna let this one have some fun and do whatever I've sped up a little time lapse here And I'm just gonna let it dry as that. This one, I spritzed the paper before I started. I just really wanted to see what it was gonna do first, just trying out my new ink I made. This one made some pretty cool effects. You can also drop some ink in half. I folded it and I see a dragonfly. What do you see? Maybe a couple dragons kissing. But I see kind of dragonfly wings with this one. Let's see what else we got here. I was so excited with this one. I see a boar. Hands down, I see a boar. Flipping over this way. This guy's so cute. Looks like a happy little dude here. He's so excited, he's so cute and little. But I'm feeling the bore. Now this one, I blotted the ink on first onto dry paper and then took some spritz of water over top of that. This one sadly dripped. I use purple cabbage, which dried to a beautiful blue, but the paper warped and then it dripped. I was a little sad and it dripped a lot and I couldn't catch it in time. This one turned out really cool. This one was the avocado. I think I used some paprika, used the turmeric, of course, and coffee. Here I see a centaur, half man, half horse in here. See a mermaid off to the right. Depending which way you look at it, you can see all kinds of goodies. Now this way I see a koi fish. Here's the eye. There's the other crazy eye way over here. The mouth, the nose, one of the fins sticking out the back. Here's a frontal fin, frontal fin, mouth. Depending what you see. This one turned out really gorgeous too. I used blackberry and purple cabbage. I think we'll have some fun with this one in a bit and see what we can pull out of this one. See some little wolves in here too. There's all kinds. Of, you know, you don't have to sit, just see animals, but I do see a lot of animals in my paintings and faces and stuff. So there's all, oh, I see a little reaper. There's all kinds of goodies here. Now this one's cool. We're going to do this one first. I see a lady dancing here with magic between her hands and I see a long flowing dress. So we're gonna start out with her. There's her face, her arms, her dress. I'm just going to try a little bit of the white pencil first, see what I can bring out. I was hoping the white pencil would pop out a little bit more, but what I truly needed was a white gel pen. A white gel pen on this is amazing. Now I find with my charcoal ink and my vegetable and berry dyes, it really separates on paper, not quite a bit, but gives some really lovely effects. So just bringing in some black ink first, see what else I can uh, draw out, pun intended. Draw out of the picture, see what we can pull out. I'm going to flip over to my sharp sharpie here, bringing out her hair and her face, her earlobe. Now she's really starting to take some shape.
and there's her arms chest her other arm I see two hearts of magic between her hands just add to her hair a little bit here I'm gonna draw the bottom of her beautiful dress Just bringing out some more detail in her face. I started putting some planets and symbols and stuff on her dress, but I think I'm going to add to that more a little bit later. Now back to my weird looking koi fish dude. I have to make a decision if I'm going to pull out the koi fish or go with the centaur. Hmm. Well, I'm feeling the centaur. So I think we're gonna hit that one instead today. And then I'll have to look up in symbolism to see what the centaur means, what that means for this drawing. just pulling out the different front parts of the horse and I'm just going to do a little bit of time lapse here so as it takes shape try not to think about it too too much just draw and pull out what you can find in your ink drop drawing try to just think with more your gut instinct more intuitive drawing do not try to force the drawing at all and just have a look around and see like you can draw one big picture in the whole thing i drew in a bow here but don't mind my anatomically incorrect hand and arm i saw a little torch here i thought it'd be cool put some flames in there I see a little little fox there sort of off with a bit of a bear but then it turned into more of a cat more of a little lion cat and I found a little owl in there too so I just started playing and going and see what I could pull out see what kind of creatures I could pull out of the picture again just leave it super intuitive just see what you can see when you can pull it pull things out of there and then don't try not to think about it try not to think about what it means for now look it up later after you're done inking your picture so you can look so for me i want up getting a few different animals and different myth creatures so i'm going to pull up the meanings of them later after the drawings are done and see what i can pull out now this one here i'm just using a silver metallic sharpie and I'm just gonna outline this one I don't think I do not think at all just line 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 see what I can come up with and see what I can pull out I'm not looking for any pictures any shapes anything I'm just inking and I'm trying to turn off my brain this is a wonderful way to do it get into a meditative state as an artist artists if they draw for a certain amount of hours every single day they probably would not have to sleep we would reach a certain type of REM sleep I swear it's a really cool uh, dreamlike state when you're doing this type of drawing so with this type of drawing after you're done then that's when you're gonna have a look at your drawing and see what you can find and pull out of your piece so you kind of just line everything have fun you can use any kind of colors you want for your lining just don't think about it just doodle just doodle and then see what you can pull out of your piece afterwards it's a really cool way to shut off your brain and take a break it is wonderful not only this is a really fun style of art but it's a really, really cool way to do ink scrying. To shut off your brain in such a way to just let things flow. 
to try not to pull things out. Like now as I was pointing, I was seeing a bird there. So check it all out afterwards. See what you can find out. Let it be for a day. Come back at it till the next day or 24 hours later and see what you can pull out. There's beautiful things that you can see. Ask questions. See what the inks have to say. Or just see what kind of creatures want to pull out and come to you. Thanks for hanging out with me today. As always, it's a cool pleasure chilling out with you. Throw me down a like up if you like this video. If you can help support the channel, I'd appreciate your time. Ring the bell, subscribe so you know when the next video comes out. And have yourself an absolutely magical day.